Frustrated with technology. Fuck technology. Fuck technology. And welcome back to the Black Sheep Narrative. It's been a, it's been quite a few months. I feel like for both on both of our sides, it's been like a wild fucking ride. I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to start off by saying uh, rest in peace to Steve. From Jack's Steve Nutrition. Jackson. Yep. Um, for those of you that don't know Steve, a lot of our audience comes from Boise, and he owned Jack's Nutrition, which was in Meridian, Idaho. A fucking, if you ever met Steve, you would uh, remember Steve, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking about it last night because I was excited to do the podcast because we haven't in a while, and then I started thinking, like, how should we start off? Like, where should we go? And I think this was, <clears throat> a lot of shit has happened for the past couple couple months and I feel like this was uh, a good way of starting off um, and kind of looking back dude I only met Steve once at Jackson mm-hmm. Nutrition I know you have like a long history with Steve mm-hmm. but like you walk in and you're not leaving that store if Steve's working which Steve works basically every day mm-hmm. for an hour because he's going to tell you your life his life story whether you want to hear it or not yeah. <laughs> yeah and the first time I met him was a couple months ago and uh, he was just telling me his life story, and we just bullshitted for an hour. Awesome man, awesome dude. I mean, if yep. you're crunched on time, you're not going to get out of there. But um, it just makes you. It was a very freak kind of. I don't even know really what what happened to him. Yeah, uh, I don't know if the whole story's out there yet, but um, you know, obviously, it was some underlying health issue that nobody really knew. You know, so. But yeah, it's got me thinking a lot about life lately because. Uh, you know, I talked to Steve on that Tuesday and he sounded perfectly fine. And then Thursday he was no longer with us. You know, I was like, holy shit, like really got me thinking about life, but it, for multiple ways, like how short life can be. Um, you know, Steve, I think he was 36 years old, so <laughs> gone way too soon. But then going to his celebration of life and then the memorial that we held last night for him, which was fucking amazing. Um, but everybody had the same story about Steve, you know, and it was cool, like being there and hearing everybody talk about like just how great of a person he was and how many people he helped out and how many people were there, you know, to, to support him. It's like uh, he left kind of a legacy behind all these people that the same message, like like you said, you walk into your store, you wouldn't leave, you, you know, you'd, you'd be stuck in there for an hour. People would have to plan their days around going to Jack's because they knew that they were going to be in there. And he was that type of human that he just wanted to be everybody's friend. He wanted to know about you. He wanted to, you to know about him. Yeah. And uh, just hearing everybody having similar stories, it's like, man, like, that's that's crazy. And yeah. the type of impact he left. And it's like, what type of impact am I going to have when I leave? You know, And it, it makes me want to be a better human. And then last night doing that memorial for him, and our goal was to raise like $2,000, and we ended up raising like 4500 <laughs> And it was amazing, just the turnout. And uh, were you there when the cops showed up? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and we were like, oh, f- we were yeah. like, oh, fuck, are we doing something wrong? And then they yep. just came and... It's like, hey, can we pull the vehicles in and turn the lights on? We were like, yeah. They pulled in, you know. It was, it was just such a great mix of people. We had the cops there with their vehicles and the lights going. We had low riders there with hydraulics going. We had <laughs> motorcycles. We had fucking, you know, free food. We just had a huge community. It was turned out. It was great. Yeah. Awesome. Kudos to you for setting that up. Yeah. I mean, I mean you did a fantastic effort, you know? job. I know there was a lot of people involved, but it was it was awesome. It was, um, I know, it, it has me thinking about life as well with Steve when you lose someone, like, just, out of the blue, even though I didn't really know Steve, I met him one time, but like even that one time, I'll still remember him throughout. So like he's leaving a legacy through people. Yeah. And then you start thinking about your life and you're like, fuck dude, it doesn't matter about fucking money or fame or glory. It's like what impact you have on people. Right. How are you helping people? Right. And that's all I, I keep thinking about that. And I mean, uh, 36 years old, man, I, I just turned 30. So it's like, what, how, how am I impacting people? Right. And I think that that's changed the dynamic, like I was saying, because like you said, it used to be not necessarily that I was all about money, but more like what what am I going to make my mark? 
Red Bull bourbon. Red Bull. What am I going to make my mark on life on? And it was always like push forward, make UXO successful, make you know the business big. And mm-hmm. now it's kind of changed. It's like, well, you know, yeah. What does that mean at the end of the day, though? If UXO blows up and I make it this juggernaut of an empire, mm-hmm. but nobody is at my funeral. Like I didn't make any impact on people's lives. Yeah, and right. ju- yeah, just the amount of people that were there last night there to support it. It's like, dude, he had to impact all these fucking people at yeah. 36 years old. Yeah. They were celebrating his life there. Like, mm-hmm. it's somber, but it's also like those kind of instances open your eyes mm-hmm. um, to realize that at any fucking moment, any single person that you love or yourself could be gone yeah. randomly. So it's like you got to take advantage of every single moment where you're with your loved ones or, you know, as you're, we talked about on the podcast, family gets older, or just like anyone, friends, loved ones, whatever. Um, got to take advantage of it. So, yeah. Sorry to start on a somber note, but also I feel like it's motivating as well. Yeah. So definitely, definitely motivating. Yeah. Um, I have two other things, two other things. Uh, just in the Boise area, if you don't want to, I think it falls on, anyone can take a piece of this. So, two big things that I want to start the podcast off with. One was, well, three big things. There was Steve, then there was number two. If you're a personal, tra- <laughs> if you're a personal trainer, do not sleep with your clients. Don't sleep with your fucking clients. I'm going to end it with that. <laughs> Don't have okay. to say more about that. Number two, number three, actually. <clears throat> Heard a couple rumors going around about, again, it's personal training. Maybe just because I'm in this world now, owning a gym or whatever. Um, If you train a person that is under the age of 18, you should not be receiving, quote unquote, like pictures, progress pictures of them, especially, especially if they're in their underwear. Mm -hmm. And... I'm not going to fucking say names. I'm not going to say any names. But first off, don't fucking do that. That's disgusting. And second off, if, if I was the parents of those kids that were doing that, I would go after that personal trainer. But I'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> I guess I'm not in the no with, <laughs> with this one. but I just want to throw it out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I hate it. Maybe it's just the children's shit. I fucking hate when I hear that shit, especially coming from a background of investigations with child crimes and whatnot, it's like, shit irks me. Yeah, you know, I know that there's some girls, uh, I know that there's a couple that are like 15 years old that are training. Yeah. Training for a bodybuilding show. And I don't know. I don't know if I agree with it at that age. Like, it's cool to have, like, 15. Like, I could see 17. Like, you're getting to 18. You want to get up on stage and stuff. But, man, 15 is a bit young. Yeah. You know? Same. I have daughters that are 17, you know? put myself in the shoes like yeah i don't know also like those pageants like i don't know how i feel about those like little kids pageants oh i hate those fucking weird as shit (laughs) yeah you see that shit it's been but but it's a norm in some societies you know yeah those parents i don't know if you've ever seen those i watched the like the show i watched like one show crazy crazy pageant moms and that's just wild (laughs) <laughs> but they, they're going to argue, well, what's the difference between that and, you know, someone pushing their kid to be Tiger Woods, you know, in golf or, right? Yeah. They're put, but it's like, okay, well, what are you pushing your kid to be? Miss America? Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I guess there's two heads, there's two sides to the coin, but I disagree with it. I think that they just kind of um, uh, objectify the little girls and, you know. Yeah. It's like the moms wanting to be in their daughter's shoes, like pushing it onto them. Yeah. It's cringy and and i guess it, yeah so when you put it from that perspective yeah you, you have those uber dads like the what's the guy with the gronk kid oh you see that kid? baby gronk baby Dude. gronk yeah oh my so you know God. that's that dad he's like all right he missed out on life he didn't get to be the star football player he wanted to be so he's putting it all on his kid and pushing him forward right? yeah and the same thing <laughs> you have these pageant moms doing the same thing like you're gonna be i missed out on my height you know <laughs> yeah i, I I wasn't fucking prom queen. I'm going to make you prom queen. It's funny that you say baby girl because he came up on my Instagram like reels the other day and it was like some girl interviewing him. Yeah. And he it's was, cringy. It is so bad. And the Instagram is ran by the dad. Yeah. 
and he's in not even in middle school. I want to say like elementary Dude. school. It's it's fucking weird. He's got the gold chains on, and you could tell he's like uncomfortable in his own shoes. Like when he's talking, trying to be a thug, and yeah. like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, and the kid. I don't know how old the kid is. He can't be over ten years. Ten, maybe he's 10, 11, 12. I don't. We could be Gronk. Baby yeah. Gronk. How old is Baby Gronk? I don't know. But I, the one woman was interviewing him, and they he was. I think the question was brought up like, "Why do you like to play football?" And he was like, "I love, I love the women. I love the cheerleaders." It's like what? Uh, it was like, yo, your dad's fucking putting those words into your mouth, man. It was, it's weird. Yeah, you did a video uh, addressing Taylor Swift. <laughs> what did he have to say for, about the for messing with Travis Kelsey and shit? Like how she should be a baby grown. Dude, I can't even. I watched that the Denver versus uh, the Chiefs game on Thursday night. It seems like they panned to Taylor Swift and Travis oh, yeah, Kelsey. It's a big thing. They're making it a bigger thing than. Yeah, the conspiracy. Got to go down the rabbit hole. Is that the NFL wanted to bring Taylor Swift into the play because think about the ratings. Yeah, like the ratings have gone up. New all the money that the, Travis Kelsey's jersey now is like the number one selling jersey in the NFL. It's a new demographic. It's football season. The Chiefs are the NFL's team, really. Patrick Mahomes is the yeah. the star, the face of the NFL. So perfect to put Taylor Swift on now with the Chiefs. Yeah. Hey, if it gets ratings. That's it. It's the money, baby. <laughs> they are an odd couple, though. Tra- Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. With right? his uh, weird mustache now. Oh. I love the mustache. <laughs> his cop stash. And I don't know if you, you have you seen, uh, have you watched our podcast? The Kelsey brothers. I've seen like clips of it and it's pretty They're funny. They're pretty good. I like watching their shit. They're funny. I, I like the his brother and their story is awesome. Like the Kelsey brothers story. Mm-hmm. Like I think Travis n- didn't get any D1 offers and then walked on to Cincinnati because his yeah. brother played for Cincinnati and then he got in trouble and almost got kicked off the team, but his brother was able to like bring him back Save onto him. the team yeah. and then he fucking crushed his senior year and yeah. now he's... The, probably the best tight end of all time. Yep. And Andy <laughs> Reid drafted both of them. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, you're a big Andy Reid fan from the, the Eagles, huh? Yeah, so when he was on, obviously when he was the head coach of the Eagles, he got uh, Kelsey. Yeah. Fucking, oh my God. Why am I not the, the big brother? Yeah, the center. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but anyways, he, he drafted him, and then when he went to the Chiefs, he Jason. also drafted Jason Travis. and Travis. Yeah. So, kudos, kudos to fucking um, Andy Reid. Without him, we wouldn't have the Kelsey brothers. Dude, he there. is a fucking mastermind. I'll tell you, watching yeah. that offense play, I love. The NFL is probably my favorite sports sports to watch. Uh, big Pittsburgh Steeler fan, and our offense is absolutely fucking garbage right now. But watching Andy Reid and his offense is incredible. Like the oh, plays yeah. that they do, like just like the mastermind Dude, genius it, behind him. Like, it was stupid of the Eagles to ever fire him, but it is what it is. He was with them for 15 years, ran, ran, ran along. Like he, the, the year they let him go, what they missed the playoffs by one game. Yeah. So it was still a, a decent season. It was mm-hmm. probably the worst season he had ever had. And I was like, you're gone. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? Sometimes and he just yeah. went over to the Chiefs and just. Start killing it over there, winning Super Bowls left and right. Dude, Patrick yeah. Mahomes, man. Yeah. That's the probably the best pick of the last two decades, I'd say. Because he wasn't even it, they were he wasn't even on the radar for most NFL teams. And then all of a sudden the uh Chiefs drafted him at like fifteen, I wanna say. I think they traded up to get him. And mm-hmm. he came out of nowhere and they're like, Oh, okay, Patrick Mahomes and he wasn't favored to go top ten or even top five, but yeah, yeah. he's been Dude, he's something. That's a good pick. Yeah. Really good pick. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see. Dude, you're the, so you're, NFL, that's your only sport? You don't watch boxing, MMA? Hockey. Hockey. Penguins fan. I'm, yeah, I can't watch baseball because the Pirates are absolutely fucking garbage, and I will not stand for supporting them because Bob Nutting is terrible. That's the owner of the Pirates, and he yeah, doesn't put any... Sell people. Doesn't, Nobody's going to know that. Yeah. <clears throat> watch the Pirates yeah. out here. No, nah, I wouldn't watch the Pirates anyways, but yeah, he, the owner of the Pirates, he doesn't put any money back into the system. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. NHL, uh, NHL playoffs for sure, the Penguins, and then the Steelers I try to watch or listen to every game. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I watch college football too with Virginia Tech. Uh, a little MMA here and there. Mm, that's about it, dude. I feel like I don't have a lot of time. What about you? Yeah. No, you I watch mean, a lot of MMA, right? Yeah, I, lo- I love MMA. Um, I've gotten back into boxing because of the Paul brothers. People are going to hate me because of that. But, dude, watching the Paul brothers fight, like, they, they just build up, you know, the hype behind the fights with the story and stuff. But I don't know if you saw this, but Logan Paul fought last night. Yeah, how'd he do? This is uh, Dylan Dennis. And uh, Dylan Dennis, like, tried putting him in a guillotine. and What? Yeah, he got disqualified. He was getting <laughs> his ass kicked. But Logan Paul was whooping his ass. Mm. And he ended up pulling guard and tried putting him in a guillotine, <laughs> tried choking him out, and then the ring got flooded with like full on melee hey. people jumping in the ring fucking it's good ratings. chairs being thrown and shit it was awesome so Dylan Danis lost it to a I believe a no contest he was disqualified yeah both of the Paul brothers dude I mean fuck make your money and and the Logan right Logan's the boxer well uh Jake they're both boxers right yeah but Jake's the one that's been fighting everybody and Logan's been kind of following him uh okay but Jake's so Logan's legit. been doing WWE uh, shit, yeah, which is weird. But yeah, Jake, I am dude. People, people give me shit for, but uh, you know, for me, it was watching. There's a Netflix. No, was it Netflix? Yes, the Untold Story. Yeah, mm-hmm. Kind of did the same thing. You watched the Johnny Menzel one, and it changed my whole perception. Of him. Same, like, dude. Like that same. sucks. Like yeah, you always hated the dude for all the bullshit he put everybody through. But when you see the backstory and realizing like how young he really was, like man, like. Yeah, you know, that, that kind of fucking sucks. Yeah. And you say you kind of get to understand who they are and why. Um, same thing with Jake Paul, the untold story. Um, he, he understands he's a heel and, like, he, he tries to sell these fights, but he's actually doing it for good reasons. Like, he's you know, argued that UFC fighters are way underpaid and how Dana White needs to start taking care of them. And, dude, his last fight versus Nate Diaz, mm-hmm. Nate Diaz made $20 million, one fight, it was more than he made in his entire UFC career. One fight. And that's what he's trying to change the narrative, saying take care of these fucking fighters. And that girl brought boxer he's brought up with him from yeah. Brazil or wherever. She's like South American. But um, she's just unreal fighter. And she was making like $500 a fight. He was like, no, fuck this. You're a champion. And he took him under her, uh, took her under his management. And now, you know, her last fight, she made millions of dollars and, yeah, so he owns like he owns the sport company, yeah, uh, um, the management company, and he's bringing all these fighters in underneath him and just paying them. I mean, he's bringing boxing back. He is. Even yeah. Mike Tyson said that. So like, all these people are like, "Fuck the Paul brothers. You guys are dumb." And even Mike, even Mike Tyson, one of the greatest, is like he loves the Paul brothers and what they're doing for the sport of boxing. He's like they are revitalizing boxing. Yeah, boxing was dying. Yeah, you know they don't know how to sell fights. They don't know how to promote. The Paul brothers do. Like let them do their thing. And to the point they, they can actually box. Yeah. You know, like people are like, oh, he needs to fight a real boxer. Well, he did. You know, he fought Tommy Fury mm-hmm. and he lost, but he went all 10 rounds with Tommy Fury. And even afterwards, Tommy Fury is like, dude, yeah, if you guys got skill, you can hung with me for 10 fucking rounds straight. Yeah. And now he's been boxing for a while, like years. Mm-hmm. And that's all he does. Yeah. So Do you live, him and uh, Logan Paul, what they, they live in um, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, yeah. For Just tax train. reasons. Train because they don't have to pay. I'm pretty sure they don't have to pay federal taxes if you live in Puerto Rico. Well, that's fucking go. <laughs> and Puerto Rico is beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah. I saw I, I saw his so new, smart. Like a twenty million dollar house that he just or has had for the past six months or whatever. Yeah, yeah dude. A, a lot of people talk about Puerto Rico. I don't know how. I don't know whether the tax loop is, but they are not paying federal taxes. Forty percent of your pay, man. Right all, back in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all going to Ukraine and uh, Israel. Uh oh. There <laughs> we go. Yeah, yeah. About that, huh? Is that a good segue? <laughs> I don't know. It just stresses me out. I get it pissed does. off the oh, more man. and more I watch the news, and yeah, I know we go on our political rants on these shows, but it's like, I don't know. I I can't even watch the news anymore because it just infuriates me. I I try I try not to either. I'm. Big into Reddit, so that that's tough too to go down. There's a ton of rabbit holes in Reddit, so you start yeah. going down the chains. And now I even stay off of social media because now everybody has an opinion on <laughs> everything. You've got the the fucking pal- support Palestinians on one side, and you've it, got support Iran or um, Israel, Israel on yeah. the other side. It's like fucking just one extreme or the other, and 
there's no middle ground, right? It's like if you support Palestine, you support terrorism. Yep, you're a terrorist. If you don't support Israel, you're not pro American. Yeah. And it's like, dude, you can support both. You yeah. can say that, yeah, what Hamas did, the terrorist group Hamas, was fucking it's brutal. Yes, you cannot have that. And there should be backlash to defend your country of Israel. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you can say, uh, I don't know what Israel is doing in the Gaza Strip is any much better. Yeah. It, you know, like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Israel scare. <laughs> this came out of nowhere. So it kind of. I feel like Israel scares me more than the Ukraine Russian war mm-hmm. right now. Maybe just because it's been so long, so it's like faded away in the background. Because I couldn't tell but you. But it's the, still going on. It's still going on. Right. And now we have this in the Middle East yeah. happening. It's yeah. Yeah. And then we just sent the USS Gerald Ford. I want to say it's the USS Gerald Ford, which is our biggest aircraft carrier in our fleet over there. To yep. sit, and then I think we just sent another ship ship yeah, over there too. Ships. So now we have two. And I talked, you know, I recently I got out of the military in thirty one August, so I still have people in the military. And uh, we have a guy uh, that goes to the gym who was eighty second airborne. He ended up getting medically retired because he got blown up. I don't know if it was in Afghanistan or Iraq. He, he lost his leg. Mm-hmm. And talking to him, and uh, we were bullshitting about the you know the whole thing going on. And he was like, yeah, I got a call from our sergeant major. He's still in like a chain, still like um, good friends with, you know, all of his people over. It's still in the 82nd. And they're like, yeah, they're on 24 hour. Like, get your bags. Like, we might have to go at any time. And it's like, I fucking hate hearing that. Mm -hmm. I hate it. But it's like, what do you do? (laughs) I I go back and forth because it's like Israel is our biggest ally in the Middle East. Right. right, they project uh, project out for us as much as people don't want to talk about it. Like the Middle East is kind of a clusterfuck. If you ever been over there, you would know. Um, yeah. And there's been war since the dawn of time, and we don't have anyone else other than Israel that really backs us or that we back them over there. Um, so, do we just let them go? You know, do we not support Israel and? Just what, where do you stand, right? Like, do you yeah. let a terrorist group hit them and say, hey, sorry, this isn't our fight? Yeah. With an ally? Yeah. But at what point do you say, I don't think we should put boots on the ground? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we, you know, I think we're, we're ramping up to get over there. I don't know if we are going to put boots on ground unless it obviously develops into a much bigger situation, right? Much bigger conflict. But... Um, but it is scary because, you know, we have to keep our allies. You got China and Russia who are ramping up their allies. Mm-hmm. Like they're now allied with one another, which has never been the case. Yep. And um, that's the other thing that scares me. Just everything that's happening around us. You have everything going over the, on the Gaza Strip, Israel. You've got uh, Ukraine and Russia deal happening. And then you look at it and you have China who who has put the line in the sand that they're going to take over Taiwan by 2025, right? 27. 27. Mm-hmm. Which they said they will. <clears throat> right. So there's lots of distractions. And then with us sending carriers over and stuff like that, like it does make us weaker here. Mm-hmm. We have the border shit happening. There's so many things happening. And uh, it scares me. It scares and it's an election year coming up? Election year coming up. We have highest interest rates we've had in forever you know um, people can't inflation. afford people like can't even, afford shit anymore dude, and that's the scary thing is there was a there was a post and I'd have to find it and share it on here but there was a post that someone did where they were comparing the average income of uh, of an american today right versus expenses and dollar for dollar ratios of of where we're at we're way worse off right now than what we were in the Great Depression, where people had no money and people were homeless and people yeah. you know, lost everything. Um, we're actually worse off right now in America than what they were, ratio-wise. Yeah. Look at the average cost of a house and how much the average monthly mortgage was. and mm-hmm. Yeah, we're worse off Yeah, how much you made. Yeah, because like what per- now, like especially if you bought a house recently or... Um, especially with the interest rates, it's like what percentage of your income is now going just to your mortgage? Yeah. 
A that huge portion. It's not just, even including. Well, you even looking just to live. Like, yeah, you, so you have your mortgage, then how much are groceries? Like <laughs> eggs, the price of eggs. Finally, they've come down a little bit, but yeah. it's still double what it was five years ago. Yeah. You know, I remember buying a carton of eggs for a dollar. Yeah. Now it's still, even at Winco today, it was a dollar ninety eight. Yeah. But I remember, fuck, when it peaked, it was, what, six bucks? Dude, it was, yeah, it sucked really bad. <laughs> so, I don't know. That That's what scares me is that, like, all, all the prices are going up. People's wages definitely are not going up. Mm-hmm. Even looking at it from the business aspect and what we have going on here and looking at the cost of goods and all of our expenses that continue to climb. But, you know, we, we can't charge people more for the product. So, even as a business, it hurts us. Yeah. What's the alternative? I don't, I don't know. know. And how do you turn it around? How do you turn this ship around? Oh, like we're we're so far. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, who knows? And, and maybe with this being an election year, uh, I don't even want to say it. I don't want to say it. Say it. Say it. I don't know. Maybe war is what we need. That's <laughs> to what, fix dude, the economy. Uh, you dude. know, and that's <laughs> a know? lot. That, that's the narrative that's getting pushed out. I've talked to a lot of people that have said that. Actually, they're like, "Look what happened after nine eleven, and how we all came back together as a unit." And it's like, but is that the reason why? So, is, are we being pushed into war because we think that's going to fix our fucking society? It, it just not, creates you know? bigger problems. It uh-huh. like. <laughs> okay, the economy starts booming because then all of the defense contracting companies and all the defense companies and every everyone's all like patriotic. Woo woo, like here we go, we're all together as one. Yeah, but, but we're just sacrificing our young to go to oh, to the Middle East or you know. And there's a time and place, right? Like, <laughs> I think some war is justified. Absolutely, you know. I feel like. <sighs> I'm not saying that we need to go to a war to fix, but that's almost what it feels like is coming from a political agenda, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I don't agree. With, I, I absolutely don't agree with war in, in any aspect just because I've been part of it and I've seen the destruction that happens yeah. to both sides. Like, it doesn't matter. Even talking about, like, reasoning and almost finding a common ground between you and your enemy and you realize they're humans just like you. Yeah. It's like, holy shit. You and know, like they're, yeah. they're fighting. If you were in their position, you'd be picking up the, the, the rifle and fighting too. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it sucks. It sucks. Like war is never good for anybody. No, not on either side. But from a political standpoint, the people that have never been to war, they're looking at a PNL, basically like a business. Like yeah, that. well, yeah, you well, it would be great politicians that right. it just amazes me that you you allow politicians to have um, stock in defense companies. Mm. Like I think the there's 80 politicians. They unusual whales just came out with it. I saw it on Twitter, one of their posts that they listed all of the politicians that have stocks in defense con, uh, defense companies, like yeah. the Raytheons, Halliburton, Halliburton, and it's like how how is this legal to do? Like obviously right. that would skew their agenda of like yeah I want I want to make money like let's fucking make money, and I put a post up yesterday. They just had, um, was it Raytheon? It wasn't Raytheon. It was one of the defense contracting defense companies, and their stock is up 35% in the week because of everything that's going on. I mean, war is big business. Yeah. It is. People make a lot of fucking money. But I feel like you talk to any, any veteran or any, any veteran that has been in a combat zone or has been in combat or has seen their friends die or have seen the enemy die, they would all probably say the same thing. Yeah. That uh, they don't support <laughs> that. No. I don't know how you could. But, and, and so it's interesting you bring up uh, making a post too. That's the other thing that's really got me irritated with people, especially with this whole Palestine thing, is there's a lot of people fucking posting shit on Instagram that probably shouldn't be. Like, <laughs> I'll even throw up the post. I threw up the post the other day of the uh, Israel, right? And they're yeah. holding their flag and... But all I put in there is like, wake up, start paying attention to what's going on around you. I'm mm-hmm. not telling people what side to choose. Like, pay attention, read, figure out what the fuck's going on, yeah. make your own resolution. But, you know, th- there's a motherfucker that owns a liquid chalk company, right? right? Okay. And this motherfucker's from whatever. He's not from here. But 
he puts in, he's quick to put the hashtag veteran owned business in his business Instagram page, mm-hmm. right? Like, fuck, I'm, I'm going to take, I'm going to take advantage of this. I'm a veteran owned business. Oh, you, you should support a veteran owned business. Like buy my fucking product. But you go to his personal page and it's all Palestine pro post, which is fine. Right, if that's you support them, you want to, but but he is spewing fucking misinformation like nobody's fucking business, mm-hmm. and he's putting up posts like the news media is man- manipulating you. You can't trust the Western media, and this is why I hate the United States ways. And it's like, whoa, slow the fuck up, yeah. right? Like you're gonna live here in this country, you're gonna use that veteran fucking own business tag to drive more sales, and you're gonna. So, so you, you're willing to, to use the United States way when it benefits you, mm-hmm. but then you're going to fucking slam them and, and talk shit about our Western ways and this and that, and then also spread misinformation yeah. to people about what's going on over there. Yeah. Like it, and so at that point, when you make posts like that, what is your agenda? Right? <laughs> yeah. Like, are you, I don't know. Like, are you trying to force someone's hand to, to almost, uh, because his views come across as very extreme to me. Like, yeah. this motherfucker is going to pick up a gun and go do some wild shit here in the States. Mm-hmm. And is that what you're trying to do? Like, brainwash other people to have your same fucking beliefs? Yeah. I don't know. I don't try and push my beliefs on other people, but I will share posts and, and ask people to read and, like, understand what's happening around you. If, if, shit like that, like, that, it pissed me off. And, and I started to respond to him because he made some comment about, like, Oh, so you're willing to say that fucking, you know, um, what Hamas did is is horrible and and unhuman like, right? Mm-hmm. And you're gonna support Israel, but what's the difference between that and you supporting fucking uh, <sighs> Ukraine, right? Yeah. What the fuck? Like, he, he, what do you say? Yeah, he's like, the Palestinians have been oppressed forever, and they fight back, and and you're gonna you're gonna support Israel. But then you have Ukraine, on the other hand, that's also been oppressed. And you're going to support them. He was like, shame, shame on you for being, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? For being a hypocrite. Uh, right? a hypocritical views. Yeah. You're going to support these guys that have been oppressed, but not support these guys. It's like, bitch, <laughs> Ukraine didn't fucking invade Russia, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, Hamas invaded fucking Israel. Yeah. That's a different story, dude. Yeah. It's a different narrative. But... It's whatever. I don't know. Dude, speaking of... got super pissed off. Yeah. Speaking of misinformation, dude, I don't know how you counter it. And I don't think with the freedom of speech, like with a platform like Instagram, where everyone has, you know, can say whatever they want. I don't think that it is the right of the government to come down to like what they did during COVID when they were Mm. putting up, like that people were taking down their, you know, they, they actually had scientific data being backed for the vaccine and yeah. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter were all like removing it, removing the posts as well as some people were getting blocked. Like yeah. scientists were getting blocked during yeah. that whole debacle. Anyways, they were basically just censoring. There was a post that Ben Shapiro put up and I was very interested to see what Ben Shapiro had to say about the Ben Shapiro's Jewish and he backs 1 million percent Israel. So I was interested to see what he had to say about the conflict between Palestine and Israel. Okay. One of his posts he put up was actually, it was a, there's a narrative going around that the Hamas uh, decapitated and killed 40 babies. That's what they're saying. Okay. People are up, like, up in arms about it. Like, they're fucking, you know, these terrorists, we need to fucking kill them all, basically eradicate them. If you saw all the politicians coming out that were saying, like, the they all need to be fuck. All need to be killed, like in more or less words. Almost anyway, we, almost we look extreme. Yeah. Right? Anyways, Ben Shapiro put up a post of a picture that was supposedly of a dead baby that was burned mm-hmm. in plastic. Well, it wasn't. It was an AI generated post, and they actually had a guy that took that picture and put it into an AI reader or whatever that shows like when it has been like manipulated by AI and found the actual picture of what it was. And originally it was just of a, um, a puppy, but someone AI generated what looked like a burned baby and cropped it into the picture and Ben Shapiro uh, posted it and he has, has since deleted it 
And I don't know if he said anything else, but that's just like goes yeah. to show like this mis- misinformation that's just being spewed. And I'm sh- it's on both sides. Yeah. Right. But I don't know if there's, I don't think the right thing to do with misinformation is to fucking have, as we have found Twitter and the big social media companies coming down because they have an agenda too. Yeah. Right. These people are on one side or the other. They're not going to be this like middleman, like middleman, all holy, like we look at both sides. No, everyone has an agenda. So, but yeah, that was, that was interesting to see. And it's scary to see that now AI is getting involved in this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, AI is, it's, it's, yeah, it's scary, man. Um, you know, some of the even new features that are coming out, even some of the shit that, that I've toyed with with AI, it's like, dude, that's fucking scary. You know? <laughs> like, um, just being able to recreate stuff and make it look real. And um, like you said, like the, 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 a photo holds so much, people react emotionally to photos, to video, things of that nature. And now, now they're getting to the point where, yeah, you can manipulate videos with AI mm-hmm. and, and actually change stuff like there's It's not going to be any need for like these big studios anymore doing these big budget movies because now you'll just be able to use AI, you know, in the near future, mm-hmm. create whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. But with it being so realistic, like it can be used to, to fuel fire politically, economically, yeah. Scary. Yeah. And the deep fakes now that they can take you and like you were talking yeah. about like the phone calls that, you, I, yeah, me and you were talking about it, like the scam calls that you're getting yeah. now where they're finding out like if you have a daughter, if you have like your wife or whatever, they can find their voice and then download it or whatever and manipulate yeah. it. So when you get a call, it sounds like your daughter, your wife, your husband yeah. on the phone and they're saying, Hey, uh, I'm in trouble. Like I need help. Like uh, I got in a car crash and they need all that. Like I need this money transferred over. And you're like, of yeah, course, there's been people that have, <laughs> that have fallen for this already. So it's already <laughs> happening. Yeah. People are getting scammed out of money, getting scammed out of, cause they think they're sending money to like their loved ones when it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Scary shit. Yeah. The deep fakes. These motherfuckers. These deep, yeah, the deep fakes. And it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning of that shit. And it's good now, but like, dude, wait a decade, wait five years, and wait until it shows. Yeah, there's actually. I bet you it's a bunch of Palestinians behind this. <sighs> Probably, damn Palestinians. <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, because uh, I even yeah. saw like quote unquote war footage from Israel and Palestine, and it's all fake. What? And you can kind of tell, like, it's it's pretty obvious that you can tell, but it's put up like, yeah, this is you know. This Israel invading uh, Palestine. Yeah. And it's like showing like planes coming in and pe- like it, the, them getting, the them getting shot. The not par- the parachute. Not oh, the, okay. not the hang gliders. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Not that one. Not that one. No. But you're, you're right. Like just so much. Because yeah, that was a post I saw. And I was like, wait, what the fuck's going on? And it showed all these people like parachuting in. Like paratroopers. Like looking like it's World War fucking two. Yeah. Paratroopers coming in. And they're like fucking... Uh, Hamas invi- invading Israel. Yeah. And uh, someone called it out. I didn't catch it, but someone in the comment section was like, dude, that, that guy's, <laughs> like that dude's parachute is uh, the France flag. <laughs> like that's not fucking, yeah. and so like I went back and looked and it's like, oh yeah. Yeah. You're fucking idiots. Yep. <laughs> so someone took some clip that they had from France from some event that they were doing. Yep. And they're like, oh, here it is. Oh, God, the end of the world. Yeah. And people are going to see that. And there were. There were a bunch of comments. And they're like, oh, my God. They're fucking coming in in droves. Yeah. Israel's under attack. Oh, my God. And yep. It's like, no, that was some event. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're taking, like, stock footage. I saw, like, and again, one of the 82nd Airborne, like, one of their training monologue, oh, like, video of them training. And they're like, God bless you. Here they go off to the Middle East. And then you, like, look in the comments I'm like they're not going right now. They haven't been deployed yet. And yeah. the one comment was from one of the, and he's like, "I'm in the 82nd. We haven't gotten deployed yet. Like this is shit. some fucking bullshit." Yeah, <laughs> dude, fucking frustrating, man. Yeah, people just need to chill the fuck out. <sighs> Can we all live? Their social media posting. Yeah, <sighs> but it, I, dude, it's all about clicks. It's all about hey, let me get some clicks. It's all about those let me views. Get some follows, baby. It's those views, man. It's all the blow up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of those fucking Instagrams, like they're they're not even ran by or they're ran by one person, but it's all just videos of different videos to see if they can get views. Mm-hmm. You ever seen those? There's a lot yeah. of Instagrams out there. 
uh, just like that because they like can make faceless, monetary Instagram. Yeah, they can make money by the amount of views they get. So they just whatever's the hot, hot topic, topic. Yep, whatever's it, going on in the they're gonna the world. skew it and try to like make it clickbaity so that you watch it. Yeah, it's like ah, oh, fuck, dude. It's like it's great. It's great. We have fucking access to. We can get the news. We don't have to go through uh, Fox News or CNN, but at the same anymore, like our fucking fathers had to go through of reading a newspaper, and God knows how they that was skewed in one way, right? right? right. But at the same time, there's so much information now, so it's like you're trying to sift through things and trying to figure out, and then you have these. You have Ben Shapiro putting up a post of a dead baby, and then you're finding out that it's, it's AI generated. You're like. What am I supposed to believe? What is yeah. going on? You know, so I try to take everything for face value now and just try. Like, you don't. It's it's you don't know what to fucking it's believe like, anymore. You know, but so think of it from this way, right? Like, let's say as a business, I don't know, is a like if I put out some misinformation bullshit, you're fucking done, dude. I can get sued <laughs> for get everything. Sued, lose my business. Um, if I, if I steal someone else's fucking footage to use, then I can get sued. You know, I can get shut down for that. What, there needs to be some sort of thing in place that if people are going to put out, you know, like, like for me, if I'm going to find something on the internet, I got to double check it. Yeah. Like, oh, this, this, this article claims that this ingredient can fucking boost this by X amount. I'm going to go fucking find the, cl- <laughs> where's the clinical study that backs this before I put it out? Yeah. Right. If there's no clinical study, I'm not putting that shit out. And there's a lot of people, especially on TikTok, dude, people putting out misinformation. information. I'm correcting people all the time when it comes to supplements. But there needs to be that same sort of, like, resolve, that same sort of, like, um, line in the sand with people putting out misinformation about politics and stuff, too. I yeah. know that would be way too hard to enforce and stuff, but, you know, I mean, that's a quick way to fix it. If everybody had this, like law over their head like you're gonna yeah. put out some fake ass shit you're gonna pay a consequence yeah my, my problem is is that it would probably come down from the federal government and then it's it would, whatever then it's, is the federal government what they believe it's, right it's a dream so even There's if no way it'll ever happen no but there no should because be. God, even look at yeah. the ukrainian russian or even the israel uh hamas palestinian uh fight war right now it's like u.s backs ukraine u.s backs fucking israel and like there is no, li- there, that's the line in the sand. So if you're going to put up any information that skews that narrative in any way, that like it'll be, it, it's going to be deemed false now. information. You're going to get put put down, and then it's back to the same bullshit that we had. So, did you see this social score that they're doing in China? Yes, I did, and that's and, wild, dude. And that, oh my God. so I guess that just contradicts everything I said because the more I started thinking about, it, I was like, wait, I just fucking want to implement the exact same <laughs> social thing credit that China. score. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's was, was like, yeah, that's not gonna fly. Never mind. God, dude, hey, did you watch Black Mirror? Yeah. Did you watch the social oh. credit score Black Mirror? Uh uh-uh. uh Oh my fuck, new one? dude. Now this is an older one. I think this is in season two or three, but that was one of my favorite ones, and it's so scary, dude. It's so fucking scary because yep. everyone, so basically the premise was that um, everyone has a social credit score and then you rate that person that you're talking to. So like me and you were talking, like say me and you got in an elevator, I didn't know you. After every conversation, everyone's rated and everyone's like so fake to each other because everyone wants to get a good rating because yeah. your social credit score matters so much. So this woman is trying to buy a new house in this neighborhood and the neighborhood has, it's like a, a um uppity neighborhood and this neighborhood has a social credit score limit and she didn't have enough because it like you want to get like it was really high so she's like i need to figure out how to get more uh like tens on my social credit score so i can go up or whatever and that's the whole premise throughout and then she starts meeting people that are really low in the social credit score and people won't even talk to them because yeah. of their social credit score. Because their score is too high. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, dude, it, it 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 already seems like it's ha- it's going to happen. Like it seems like the U.S. is going to a digital currency, which scares the fuck out of me too. Yeah. Because there is there isn't going to be a uh, hey mow my lawn. I'll give you ten bucks, twenty bucks, and everything's going to be tracked, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everything that you do and. Look what Canada did with the truckers in COVID. Like, they fucking shut down 
uh, bank accounts for these truckers that were going yeah. against the vaccine. They couldn't get, they didn't have access to their money. Yeah, that's wild. Fuck that. And uh. then it, when it comes to a digital currency, when they phase out the dollar, it's not like you can just take your money out of your account and hide it under your fucking mattress. Right. Where are you going to put it? <laughs> yeah. What are you going to have a hard drive? Hopefully you have a hard drive. You can plug it in, but it, it, they're not, banks aren't going to allow that. Yeah. I'm going to be able to fucking plug your USB drive in and be, <laughs> and be able to take your money your and then, yeah. Into an ATM yeah, exactly. And take your money, money, take your funds out, dude. You're yeah. fucked. It did. It, that's the dystopian future. But yeah, China's already going. Yeah. China's it's crazy. already implemented it. And then just to keep their people in fucking line, dude, they can't do anything. Yeah. It's like you talk bad about the CCP. Eh, you're not going to be able to buy groceries for your family tomorrow. Yeah. That's scary as shit. <laughs> scary as fuck, dude. That scares the shit out of me. The social credit score shit, but yeah. Think about North Korea and how like regimented they are, and dude, you you post that one dude, the one dude on TikTok, and which, <laughs> which took a picture of the corner of his room in North Korea. What? I was in Snapchat. What? Yeah, there was Which that one? video where, where the fucking, you, there's a map that you can see, like, what anybody's posted on Snapchat. Mm. And, like, you zoomed in, and yeah. there was one from North Korea, and you zoom all the way, and you click on it, and it was a dude that just took a picture of his wall. Yeah. And it was like, this <laughs> motherfucker's risking everything. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> just took a snap of yeah. his fucking wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, it was one, like, you look at U.S., and it's, like, lit up with colors all over. Yeah. You go over to North Korea, there's one fucking post dude, for that. Risking his something. goddamn life, yep. dude. Good for him. <sighs> Taking He's a snap. Oh, just of his wall. Just be like, I'm. He's probably not here anymore. They, put, right. they definitely found him real quick. Yeah. Motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. that's the. Uh, so you know, for all you bitches out there, yes, I said bitches ooh. that are fucking the big B talking about us and how fucking awful we are and this and that. Yet you live in this country. Things could be way fucking worse for you, dude. It's the Try same. Try living in China or North Korea. <laughs> God damn it. It's yes, I, I understand a lot of shit's broke right now, but we still have, we have it so good here. We still have the Second Amendment. We have the First right. Amendment. I'm going to go home and watch an Eagles game. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> we still, yeah, we still have, <laughs> dude, it's fucking ridiculous. Yes, a lot of shit's broken, but you know what? It can be fixed. It can, it can be. And you know what helps fixing it is if you get out there and vote. Yeah, I mean, you have this to. election s- year, make your fucking voice heard. You have to still believe in democracy. You still have 100%. to believe in our, there's a lot of corruption and it's definitely um, being unveiled, especially since COVID and everything, but you still got to believe that the system can work because this is, for all we know, the best system that's ever been implemented. Right. Um, I mean, we are the freest. You can really do whatever the fuck you want still. Like, right. You want to build a business? Cool, dude. You can Go do it, man. And <laughs> the resources that are given to you to build yeah. that business. And look at how many fucking people are on, like, I don't want, you know, there's welfare, there's disability. Yeah. Hell, I even get some disability from the service. Me too. For having a fucked up back and fucked up hearing, right? Mm-hmm. So what other countries offer that? You go over to Afghanistan, those motherfuckers aren't giving shit, <laughs> no. right? Like, no. seeing how they live, and I respect those people so much for that shit. But dude, we, we, we have a lot of privilege here in our society uh, I feel like that's made us weak, but it's the same motherfuckers but that have still... never left the U.S. Though it's the same. You won't hear a service member that was over in the Middle East or in the bumfucks of Africa in the villages saying saying this shit. Yeah, you know, like you got it, but because there's no perspective, they don't have perspective. Right, they've only lived here. They probably have never even that's left their state. You know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this is all they know of their culture and everything. And there is a lot of fucked up shit. But, like, what's great about the U.S. is, guess what? You can make the change. Right. <laughs> you can still voice your opinion. Yep. You, if you don't like what the government's doing, guess what? You have the right to fucking say, fuck the government. This is why I believe this. We need to do this. And all those other countries, you go against what whoever's ruling that country. You, your family... Even people that aren't your family that you're just like associated with, yeah. they're all fucking gone forever. Forever. Yeah. It's wild. <sighs> yep. But I have faith in this country. I still do. I still have faith in the people of it too. I do too. It just, and I believe in the people. Like there's, there's so many, like, no, so many great people. Uh, yeah. 
inside from the military, outside of the military, like we can still make a change. Um, we can still get back on track because what's the alternative? All right. You know what the alternative is? Yeah. Is you flip this bitch upside down and you don't want to see that. Right. As much as you say, fuck this place, fuck what a, the government's doing, fuck the politicians. It's like, you want to go down that route? Yeah. You want to change everything? And you don't think that China, Russia, like the big countries that we're against are hoping that that's going to happen? Right. You don't think that they'll step in when you're trying to like revolt against our government? Like, you out of your mind? Yeah. Like, you can still vote, like you were saying. Like, you can still vote people in and out. You have the opportunity. It just, it's very difficult because, like, we just talked about, um, everything's so fucking expensive. Everyone's just trying to get by right now. So it's like, dude, I don't have the, like, I don't have the money to just take off work or not to work and try to protest against, you know, what, whatever you feel is right that's right. going wrong in the government. Like, I don't have that fucking time, nor do I have the money. A lot of people I just are trying to get by and just pay for their kids to get new shoes. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, fuck it. But, but uh, you know, and, and recently I watched Band of Brothers again. It's so fucking, yeah. dude, it is such a good movie. It's the best show, war show. War show. Mm-hmm. Other than Generation Kill, was, it was all by the same people, though. By Generation Kill, yeah, Band of Brothers, yeah, um, the Pacific, yeah, it's all the same shit. Yeah, it's but what what open like, dude, those guys took the stand in a war that we were like not supposed to win, <laughs> yeah, you know, and held the ground, and it's because of those great men that fought in World War II that we have a democratic society today. Had Hitler and the Nazis won, like we, we'd yeah. be in a much different scenario. Ooh, yeah, right? you don't want to see that shit, right? But and so that 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 kind of built like watching the Band of Brothers again, like kind of got me excited and amped up, like you know, because that's the American way. Yeah, like we do, we do stand up and fight. We get tough when we need to, and we, you know, we're not gonna lose. No, and we're the, fucking Americans. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and as much as we say, like this generation, like. Yeah. The, this generation, how if they go to war, how are they? They're and just going to do I've, TikTok dances in the fucking. Dude, I've said the same thing. I'm like, dude, we're not ready. We're <laughs> weak because I started thinking about this generation. But after watching Band of Brothers, it's like, you know what? Those dudes were 20 years old too. Dude, know? no one's ready for war. Nope. But when you get put in that situation and you're in the fight, like, we will, we will fucking achieve. I think so. I agree. I'm stoked. <laughs> Not that I'm stoked for war. Yeah. I'm stoked for the American way yeah. to push forward. Yeah. Right? I'm stoked. Yeah. Jeez. I'm stoked. That came, that came out way wrong. I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Let's go to Let's war. Let's fucking go, baby. You're firing me up. Let's go. You ready to get back in? <laughs> I would. Like it. Would you try? Would you try? No. Th- no. <laughs> no. Not because I know I won't be able yeah. to. But if they did say all able bodied men, goddamn right I would. Yeah. I think I would. Yeah. I think I would be the but war if of they're our, like, "Hey, yeah. we need people to enlist." There's no way. I mean, right now I'm too old. I'm too broken. Yeah. But if they said, "Hey, any able-bodied man," that's what it would need, come to. I'm like, fuck, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> Take me. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, it'd be the war of our generation. It'd be World War Three. That's the next thing, right? Yeah. Like all the fucking. Think of the memories you're gonna make, dude. <laughs> I don't want. Th- I mean, truly, like, I don't want to be that person that misses it. Like, is that selfish? Yep. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm going to be... Okay, if, if they don't let me in, I will still support the war effort. Like, again, I think we talked oh, yeah. about it. We're going to change the supplement company, UXO, into we're just going to make fucking missiles. Missiles, yeah. <laughs> missiles or armament, whatever. Bullets. We'll yep. fucking take whatever. the back, make some bullets. I'll be pressing bullets all day. Yep. Got if, right. they, if they don't let me in. Whatever. Yeah, I'll, watch the we'll TikTok. I'll watch the TikToks of all of our buddies over there fucking... <laughs> Hopefully not dancing. <laughs> dance, dance. I don't think they'll have time to dance, dude. It's a different type you of... Dancing around bullets. Dancing around missiles, dude. It ain't even fucking... Locking, popping, and fucking... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dipping and dodging. In no man's land, <laughs> yeah. in the middle of trenches, just fucking doing... Oh, fucking my God. Six shooting back. <laughs> Got you, bitch. Yeah. Views. Think Who about knows, the views. Man. Who knows? Maybe TikTok's prepped us, man. Maybe that's been... 
That'll be the game changer for us. <laughs> be out there hitting yeah. moves, fucking no captivating care. them while no, we're yeah. taking them out. Yeah, because <laughs> we're also desensitized to death and in war, right? We've all seen it on the grant Instagrams and the YouTubes and whatever. Everyone's no one's afraid of death anymore. We're just fearless. We're just dancing in no man's yeah, land. That's what I'm saying, fucking man. ready. Uh, but um, and that's the other thing too. And like I've tried to get people under. Because I don't know if you ever went through it. And we talked about it before on this, but watching Band of Brothers, there's a part where, and I don't know if you remember that episode, but it's the guy that, like, hid. Yeah. He it, hid. In, in the, the foxhole. In the foxhole, and he didn't even attempt to go find anybody because he was too scared. And then he, he that he has that one um, officer yeah. that everybody thought was fucking crazy, nuts. And he's like, you know, how do you, how do you not be afraid? And the dude is, the trick is, it's a, it's a game. And the trick is... Once you realize that you're no longer alive, you'll start to be able to prepare as a yep. soldier. And that clicked with me because, like, we've talked about it. Like, I got to a point, like, halfway through my deployment where I just accepted I was dead. Yep. Like, I was like, I'm not going back. Like, yep. I accepted I'm not returning. And yep. it does. It's like a flip, a switch flips with you because it's like you almost realize you're not coming back. And so you are going to take more risks and you're just over there doing your fucking job yeah. as a soldier. Yeah. And when gunfire racks out around you, you fire back. Like, there's just, it, it, like you said, it's almost like you get the adrenaline rush, mm -hmm. but there isn't fear. You can't have fear. No. And you don't. You do in the beginning. You always have fear. Mm -hmm. But you, like, lose that. Yeah. That's, so. that's my favorite part. That's my favorite guy in Band of Brothers, and I think Band of Brothers did an awesome job because he was the same guy that paratrooped in and then hid. And he he didn't even look for his company when he paratroop when he uh, um, when he went in and then they find him and then they they focus in on him for a couple episodes yeah. and he's like hiding because he's fucking scared and then he asks that officer yeah and yeah. he's like the and thing is is I'm ar I'm up. already dead yep. and he stood up and he fired and he killed that guy they were retreating the Germans were retreating he, he killed that guy yeah. and then he goes to look for him and sees him and like realizes okay. And then the very next episode, he gets fucking shot. Yeah. And he ends up dying. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's such like a good series, real, I mean, it's just the, the, it's not like the, um, uh, like any other war movie where this guy overcomes his fears and then becomes this bad motherfucker. It's just like goes to show that war is random and war is hell. And like he overcomes his fear and the very right. next mission he goes, he gets shot and killed. But I don't know if you, if you watch closely when he goes and finds the dude he shot, right? Mm -hmm. um, in an earlier episode, they, they come across this German and he was already dead. German Nazi. Mm -hmm. And he had a little like flower thing. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the one officer's like, yeah, that's such and such flower. That means this guy was a real warrior because that stuff only grows above the grass line, which means he had to hike to the top of the Swiss Alps to get it, which mm -hmm. means he's a bad motherfucker. And um, the dude that he had shot, the guy that had fear, had that same type of flower. Mm -hmm. and so it goes to show, like, yeah, he was a bad motherfucker on the German side, but he got taken out by one of the, you know, yeah. the dude that was just... Scared like, shit. Quote, unquote, coward, more yeah. or less, right? And it also, I think, on the flip side, it also showed that dude that was coward. It was like, holy shit, I just killed an elite SS soldier. Mm. So yeah, I, never, I can do this. I didn't think of it that I didn't think yeah. of it that way. That's, but, yeah, you, like you said, it's, war is random. <laughs> war is unforgiving. Yeah. And it uh, doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. Working. And some of the motherfuckers that made it out of Band of Brothers, you know, and they're the, the old guys talking at the beginning, that, that always teared me up. Like, it would kind of jerk at me. And it's like, yeah, those dudes, like, how the fuck do they survive all that shit? They didn't, the, all of them said, that I, th I think the majority of them said they didn't think that they were going to survive. Right. They all assumed that they were going to die. And thinking, like, what we went through in our deployments, we went out on a bunch of missions, but we never went into battles like that. Like, those motherfuckers survived the invasion. In Normandy, paratrooping in behind enemy lines in yeah. Normandy, fucking overcoming D-Day, <laughs> going into Bastogne, yeah. Battle of the Bulge. These motherfuckers were, they were like battle after battle after battle. Charlie Company, the 506th Airborne, those motherfuckers went through it all. <laughs> like the hardest of the hard and persevered. Like that's insane. For years. For years over there. Yeah, like the one dude is you get into the deep, like he'd been over there for three years straight. Like, <laughs> God damn. 
<laughs> how do you how do you come back from that? Like, how do you come back and just oh, I'm just gonna take Not off my same. uniform and uh, yeah, <laughs> but it's like, God damn, dude. Yeah, so lots of respect for those dudes. Like thinking, like really realizing all the shit they went through. It's, I couldn't even fathom. No, even being a part of one of those big battles, which L- let obviously alone. I never was. But being a part of like that would be traumatizing, you know. And <laughs> these dude, and and when you watch the timeline of it too, it's like they did D Day, and then two days later they were taking over that city, and they were right back in the fight. Mm-hmm. Like what the fuck? Yeah. Like you're talking two days later, you just <laughs> survived the biggest onslaught ever. Yeah. With D Day, and now you're fucking taking over a city and in your next biggest battle ever. Yeah, because they lost like a f- like 40 of their people in their company or whatever, and then they got told um, in the and 40, movie. 40 people in a company nowadays, that's that's like three quarters. It was a lot, a lot of people, so they were like, all right, you guys need to rest and it's recover, like and they like went back to camp <clears throat> uh, behind uh, the front line <laughs> to like recover. And then they got told, okay, you guys are good. You guys are going to go back we need to, to back out there. England and that you're going to recover and then we'll figure out what you're going. And everyone was like celebrating and they're like, yeah. And then one of the, I don't, one of the E eights, I want to say E seven, E eights or whatever comes in is like change of plan, boys. We're going to fuck it. It wasn't Holland. It was the battle of the bulge. Right. Yeah. And they're like, Oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Because they were getting their asses kicked. Yeah. Around. Dude, it's nuts, <laughs> but yeah. Good series. So if you haven't watched Band of Brothers, go check that out, especially if you like like history. Like That's what I liked about it, too. And my wife is such a history buff that like the whole time we're watching it, and I'm watching like getting into the storylines, she's researching all the guys. So mm-hmm. it's like Lieutenant Winters. And she would like Wikipedia this dude, and she'd be like, oh, it says here that Lieutenant Winters XYZ. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, shut up. I'm watching the show. <laughs> And she'd be like, oh, it says here that this guy, <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> like, she nerds out on that stuff. But, it, no, it's such a good series, dude. I binge-watched the shit out of it. I finished it in, like, three days. Yeah. Just staying up late at night, couldn't turn the brain off. Yeah, and it's on Netflix. And yeah, now, now it's on Netflix. So, which you have no excuse. <laughs> the majority of people have a Netflix account or your parents' Netflix or your friends of a friend's That's Netflix. That's right. Log in. Log in, fucking check it out. <laughs> Oh, good first episode back. Yeah, it feels good to be back again. We've been weekly now. Yeah, it's been, uh, dude, there, fuck, so much stuff has happened in the past like three months that we, it's just been like one thing after another thing after another thing. Yep. But there's no we'll excuse now. There's no we'll excuse doing, now. We'll get our cadence back for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, now that we have all, all the other stuff out of the way, everything's out of the way now. Be on here talking about. All the fun stuff that you want to hear. Yeah. Going down political rabbit holes. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, when they tell me that I got into grad school this week, I can tell you about what I'm learning in grad school. Ooh, so you did. You got in? I haven't heard yet. It should you be. You had your six hours. I forgot to even ask. Yeah, my six hour. Wait, it wasn't actually it wasn't six hours. It was from nine to one o'clock. So it was oh, geez. nine, ten, eleven. So much better. Four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Four mm-hmm. hour interview. Yeah. And it was like different stations. Uh, so I applied for. T- I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just got out of the military 31 August and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I thought, and I thought it would be an easy transition out of the military. Like I was like, Oh, I have everything lined up. Like I got the gym, all this kind of stuff. And then it like kind of hits you in the face. Like, dude, you kind of, you don't lose, you lose your yeah, way kind of. Yeah. Right. So it's like, what do I want to do? Cause military for what it is, it is fulfilling. You feel like you're doing something bigger than yourself. Yeah. So you're like, 100%. okay, I can, I can get behind that. But um, and then I, f- I was like, oh, I don't, I need something. I need something to feel that way. And I was like, I can just be a police officer again. Cause that's what I did in the military. I fucking did investigations. And I remember sitting down in those interviews and I was like, dude, this isn't, I don't think I can do this anymore. Like, and it just doesn't fulfill me anymore. It doesn't give me that like excited. I was just sitting there kind of just going through the motions. So I applied to be a, a mental health counselor, mental health therapist, um, yeah. And I had in the interview, it's a two-step process. You have to put in all this paperwork and write all these papers. And then you have an interview. And it's kind of cool how they do it. Um, you, have a, you have to go in. You have to do a writing sample. You have to do a group, uh, group exercise. Then you have a one-on-one interview with uh, a, a therapist, counselor. Um, mm-hmm. And then after that, 
you have like a, a exercise where it's just you talking to someone and they're talking about their problem. And it was actually, re- I mean, I was like, God, that's going to be easy to talk to someone. It wasn't. It was fucking difficult, dude. Yeah, I sat right. there and I was like, hmm, this is, so the scenario was that the, uh, it was a friend of mine who, um, she had, she was dating, a, a black guy and her family was racist and she oh. was going to bring her friend, her, her boyfriend over for the first time. And she was freaking out about it. Mm-hmm. And it was me trying to like talk to her about it. And it was difficult to like go through and like trying to figure out what to say. Cause like, what do you, there really isn't anything to say about it. Right. Right. So like, I'm just trying to help her navigate the waters and really just make her feel better. Cause she's just talking to me and we're just friends. We're just trying to talk it out. Just let her get it out of the system. Cause there's nothing I can do to like help really. It's like, yeah. have you thought of it this way? Have you tried this? How do you feel like this? It was, it was interesting and very difficult. <laughs> yeah. I bet. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's over. So I should know uh, this week if I get in Fuck or yeah. if I don't get in. So, and then we can talk about the classes that I'm in. So going back to school for the first time and since God, graduated old. in 15. So it's been eight years since I've been in school <laughs> and it's grad school. <laughs> Dude, it'll be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it'll be good. Get out and you'll be able to help military dudes. Like yeah. With- Mental issues. Yeah, I just like we talked about it too. Um, I don't know if I could go to a therapist, like, and I've gone to therapy before, but I don't know if I could go to a therapist that wasn't in the military and I'm talking to them and they right. don't have the ex- not even the experiences, they but can't don't relate. know, you yeah. know, just because you read something out of a book, right? It's not the same. No, and yeah, I've so talked talk to a lot of veterans that have that same issue. They're like, yeah, yeah I've gone, to, like, I want to go to counseling and therapy, but like, I've never found the right person. Right. They're always just telling me to do something out of a book. Yeah, let's, they can't let's put relate. you on vacation and stuff like that, right? <sighs> Dude, yeah. All right. Yeah. That's it. So I'm the same way. Yeah, you have to be able to find that person that like can relate that like, you know, has been in your shoes that understands kind of what you're going through. Uh it's too difficult not to to accept their guidance even, right? Yeah. If they have it. Yeah. I don't know. It sucks. I mean, maybe on the flip side of things, like you want to go to someone that doesn't have any experience into it. I mean, I wouldn't want to personally, but like maybe they can see a different, you know, way of thinking or going through problems because they've never been there. So they're going to give you different things to yeah. think about. I don't know. Yeah. Personally, I would want to go to someone and I don't think there's enough and we have a mental health, we have a mental health crisis and 22 veterans commit suicide but that number is very low a day uh, as we know i think it's more like 40 plus veterans yeah commit suicide a day um and there's a lot of people struggling and with with what's coming up uh potentially with everything that's going on in the world there's going to be a lot more people struggling once they come back because yeah. that shit ain't going to be easy so well good man i'm excited for you yeah should be interesting <laughs> yes, sir. All right, people. Well, we're gonna get out of here. Yeah. But, so he can, uh, so John can next, watch the Eagles games. That's right. Eagles are on. I I gotta go support my team. Yeah. Eagles for freedom and liberty. Yeah. Let's see. Because they started and it's fourteen three right now. Eagles. Ooh. Second quarter. Go. Five minutes left. So you'll be able to watch the whole second half. Banger. God, they're five Banger. five and zero oh right now. Dude, did you see that? Uh, yeah, they're five and zero. Oh. Did you see Colorado University? The um, how they were winning what twenty three nothing to Stanford and then Stanford came back in double overtime and won. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I was so look, I was so excited for Deion Sanders to be in Colorado University. And I so badly want to be a fan, and I still am. I like what they're going on, but that fucking sucks. That sucks. <laughs> but he that's like a punch in the fucking mouth because he was like, the they were like the golden child of they, the the NCA. Like I mean, put on Sports Center, it was all Colorado for the first what two weeks. Yeah. Or, yeah, and all everything about Deion Sanders. Everybody, all <laughs> eyes on them. And then uh, when Hunter went down, it's just like, dude, that sucks. It's a one man team, right? You take Hunter out, who plays both sides of the ball. He's been injured for the past three games after that fucking shot he took. Yeah, at, um, Colorado Springs game. You know, like, damn, <laughs> damn, that sucks. But I hope they'll be able to rebound. I mean, even if you look at Compared to last season, what they won one game, so they're already four hundred percent better yeah. <laughs> than they were the year before. But yeah, dude, to lose the Stanford that way, oof, 
double overtime. Yeah. It's our second double overtime game. The first one was the Colorado Springs game. Colorado yeah. State game. Colorado State yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. In Colorado. Was it in Colorado Springs, though, or no? Did they do it in, was it in Buffs? Either way, uh, won it um, double overtime. It was like mm-hmm. 2 o'clock in the morning when the game finished. Yep. 1 o'clock in the morning, crazy. Um, yeah, and this one, which was the reverse opposite, <laughs> they lost this one double overtime. Yeah, like, Stanford, an yeah. unranked team. Yeah. And uh, Colorado State, who they beat in the double overtime. BSU just lost to last night by yeah. one point. Yeah, and it was so, a last-minute throw. Yeah. It was a 60-yard throw to the end zone to win the game. Yeah. And they so, fucking caught it. Caught it. <laughs> so it's showing that Colorado State ain't that much better. That, or, I'm sorry, University of Colorado isn't that much better than BSU right now. Is this that, is one of our fucking oof. bad seasons. We're not doing good at all. Oof. We haven't been doing good for couple of years though yeah dude you got to give credit to Deion sanders though like i do to I, I still i'm still go, a fan i still support him though. go to a program with nothing dude that won one game last year and him coming over getting all of his players as much as uh, as many players as he can right now from um where was he at prior what was that jackson state yeah jackson state so taking yeah. a lot of the players out of there and now playing at colorado but dude I don't know. I haven't looked at his recruiting teams. class. I wonder how his recruiting class is going for next year or this year going into next year. I think a lot of people, that's the edge he gets, though, is people are going to want to play for him because he's Fuck one of the yeah. greatest. You know, he's a two, yeah. two sport Hall of Famer, and it's like uh, he's Deion Sanders. And right? all eyes on that program, dude. If you, you, you're going to be on Sports Center every fucking week or every Sunday when they replay the game. Yep. So you want to fucking get some looks on the NFL? It's fucking yeah. Deion Sanders, and he knows Deion Sanders. probably the majority of the people in the NFL. Yep. Right? So he can push you. Let's make it happen. Yeah. So. All right, people. So tune in next week for more goods. We love you. Uh, Black Sheep out. Out. Yeah.